Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Maze Ball Podcast. I'm excited today. We have a guest who's a Lebanese American content creator. She plays a mother, she plays a singer, she plays many, many roles, but all of them are funny. <laughs> today we have Maya Hussein. Woo! <laughs> Oh, snap. Lebanese okay. Canadian. Let's go. <laughs> oh, why do I? Oh, my bad. It's okay. I'm so like. It's all good. Um, my but bad. that was a nice intro. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm I'm American, so I just, you know, you know how us Americans generalize. Yeah, everything's American. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are yep, you? Yep, yep, Good. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm in Florida. Dude, I see you traveling all over the world. I'm like, yes, girl live your life you know what uh someone once told me if you go back home you're never going to be able to travel ever here i am traveling wait what does that mean yeah. <laughs> you go back. for me to know and you to find out <laughs> <laughs> okay okay cool uh, <laughs> so maya i know a lot of people know you from your one minute videos but i'm super excited to deep dive and get all the juicy secrets from you i know what you're trying to do I know what you're trying to do and let's Yay. do it. Let's do it. Ah, I love it. I love it. I'm like excited because you have such a crazy growth and a journey. And I think like the gems and the lessons that you've learned along the way is really going to help so many people who are, you know, watching you to get to know you better and people who want to do what you're doing, like learn more. Yeah. You know what? TikTok is, uh, is, is pretty cool because it gives you that opportunity where I find people that are shy, they're on this app and they're showing a different side of them. I never mm. in my life thought I'd go on an app and show millions of people like you know my crazy funny wild embarrassing side <laughs> yeah yeah but it's I it's love good it. i i love it i love tiktok it's it makes it's made me meet people like you so oh i wait i can't wait to I actually meet you in person <laughs> I know we've been trying to do this for so long, yeah. but at least we could like hop on together live yeah. or something. But so, so is TikTok your favorite platform? I love TikTok. I, I, I hate the certain things that are on there are like annoying, but like, <laughs> but I do love TikTok and I love Instagram. Instagram is more personable. I don't know how if you feel that way. Hmm. I think uh, I use different platforms for different ways. Yeah. I think I'm more comfortable on TikTok. I show more of my life. I show more of my life on Instagram. Oh, sure. okay. Because I do stories nonstop and then I post right. in between as well. But on TikTok, I just post one time and I'm out. Like, I just, I'm like, okay, whatever, cool. And I'm more carefree on TikTok than I am on Instagram. Instagram, I feel a lot of pressure. Like, it's really hard to move up on Instagram. It is. It's harder to, like, but you're almost I don't there. Know, like, one million. Oh! You're almost at one million. Dude, I can't believe it. I'm so really, proud of you. Thank you so much. You know, like when I, the closer I get to a million, the more nervous I am. Like, no, 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 I don't want to hit the million. This is crazy. Like, I don't know why I'm like against because it. it's like, a reality. No, it's like reality check. It's like things are actually really happening. When you see that one M, one M, it's gonna say one M, <laughs> one Mayan. <laughs> I've had a lot of M's happen in my life. Max, marriage, money, Maya Hussein. Maysball podcast. I have so many M's in my life happening. <laughs> and today's M is Maya. Yeah. Okay, so tell me, tell me. Is TikTok how you started content creation or you were on Instagram first? No, I started on TikTok. So I used to work at a gym and I also took ECE in um, early child education, which is an assistant teacher. And then I quit the gym because I asked for more money and they wouldn't give it to me. That's the honest oh, truth. Oh, disgusting. You're watching. Dis in your face because alhamdulillah, um, where am I right now? At least, <laughs> what were the benefits of the job? Did you see some hot guys? Yeah, I mean, eh, 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 can be hot or can be not. <laughs> mm, you, know what I, you know what I mean? But um, this gym was very expensive. You would, you would have liked it, you know. Oh. Engineer here, lawyer there, <laughs> everywhere. Maybe I can bring my single friends there. <laughs> <laughs> and pretend, I can see my eyes just spraying your face and be like, whoo. Listen, <laughs> believe it or not, I am an amazing wing woman <laughs> because I have no shame in my game. I, I already, you know, I'm married. I have nothing to lose. So I go, I'm like, you stupid guy. She is a hot girl. You stupid. Go and hit on her. And then I'll walk away. That's it. That's my, 
<laughs> I'm a really great wing woman because I'm very direct. Okay, let's go. When I come to North Carolina, let's do this. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so I started I started on TikTok after COVID uh, began. And uh, it was uh, something funny. I was just joking around. I was not taking it seriously at all. And then one video blew up and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Overnight, I got a few thousand followers. So I was like, maybe I should just keep going see where it goes and it just kept growing and growing and growing actually i remember when you came on my live oh I, well like the first time and i started screaming <laughs> oh yes i do remember that 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 was a very long time very ago. long time ago you were so excited about my reaction you actually posted it on your story it's crazy because oh, yes. because it was like when you guys started popping into my lives i was just like okay I'm, i think i'm doing something right because these guys are these comedians are like watching and following me so it felt good. It motivated me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that Wait, did you before. always knew you were, did you always know you were going to do a lot of content? No. Like, was that how you started off or you started off doing more? No, no, no. When I first started, yeah, I was just throwing videos here and there, but then I was just like, okay, I heard a sound, you know, that song I can do it. I can do it, Yes. but I'm only human. So I got my dad to put his hands behind his back, walk outside in his pajamas uh... and look at it, uh, look at the trees and then put his hand behind his back at that part that went it's like 1 million views so I was like whoa okay so this is what they want to see and then I started, started seeing people's content and I was just like okay they they like the uh, at home out of video feels and I like to do specific videos I don't know if you see my videos I like to do specific things that actually happen of in conversations I see your videos my like <laughs> come on oh my god are you gonna offend me I'm this sorry. Whole podcast? Yeah, I'm sorry she does you do you like my videos thank you Elvi. <laughs> I don't know if you see my videos, but why the hell do you think I, I have you on here, all Maya? Your videos, all of them. Me too. I watch your videos too. I like it. I laugh. Come on, girl. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that's how I started TikTok. And then somebody said, why aren't you posting on Instagram? And I was like, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to. Wait, and... Maya, you jumped a whole lot. I know. I'm, I, know I, have, I think I have ADHD. Juice. I don't know. No, it's all good. <laughs> so, so when you quit your gym, that's when you started TikTok? Yeah, like two weeks, three weeks later, COVID hit. And I heard about TikTok and that's when I started. Okay. Yeah. And then you just started doing TikTok for a few months? Yeah, I just, I was doing it for about five months. And then I started Instagram after that. Okay. Like posting okay. on and Instagram. And you knew? And like you knew that it was working when like, like your community started getting stronger. Yeah. And then I, see, I started seeing people with blue verifications following me. and People like you. At the time, you didn't have a verification, but I knew you were big. You were what everybody was talking about you still get talked about babe but like you know what i mean it's, it's like you came on my live donna came on my live the safe show off you know he started talking to me like it was just like okay people are liking my content and my ideas and i it just motivated me like i said so yeah dude i remember because i i had the same feeling when i was on tiktok and i was just like focused on the videos and doing them and then i would see like big people start following me i'd be like oh my god yeah. What? This is like, it's really exciting when, you know, there's a lot of hot up content creators that I used to look up to and I used to hit up before, like when I first started yeah. and they wouldn't give me a time of day. <laughs> Swear to God, Maya. But now they're they chasing even, after you, honey. Now I'm like <laughs> double, triple, bigger, bigger than them. Yeah. And it's, it's for me, it's like shocking to see like, oh my God, like, wow, I surpassed the people that we used to, like, I, I used to look up to. Yeah. And it's really an exciting feeling. But, and I, I'm sure that happens to you. Like, you used to look up to somebody and then you're like, damn, look at us. We're, you know, yeah. I, I'm past them or, I'm, I'm, you know, we're kicking it now. Like, sometimes those moments hit me and I'm like, God, damn. Yeah. And you know what? I used to I used to look at people's followers and think, like, oh, I just want to be there. Like, or, really? you know, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I felt like my content was just better than theirs. And I was just like, why am I not going up there? Like, why is my yeah. number so? But then I, I realized I was just like, my followers are more personal. Like, they're not just following me just in the sake of following. They're following me because they actually really want my, like, to watch my content. Because I do see people grow on the social media platform and I just don't get why. I don't. This is me being <laughs> straight. Does it like bother you? Or you're like, oh, okay. I just, I just don't, I just don't get it. You know what frustrates me is when I do a five second video and it blows up. Like it takes me to, it takes me so much, like five seconds to make it, like 10 seconds maybe. And then I just work on one video and it doesn't get the amount of views that it should. I don't know if that's bad to say, but. <laughs> 
No, it's not bad to say. I just think it, it just speaks into what people like more now. And I think when things are more skittish and polished, it doesn't work as well as good just, yeah. as like a raw moment. Yeah. Or like a fast moment. I like to, nowadays, I like to keep my videos like 15 seconds or shorter. That makes my life easier. Yeah. No, <laughs> I keep way it. Less I, try, work. I try to keep it at 30 seconds as best as I can. And the thing is, like, yeah. I translate all my videos, my, like, all of them just so I can have not just Adams following me, non Adams, you know, like I want different types of people following me. Yeah. And it helps. And so, okay. So as you started like growing in the auto field, like what were some things that you really liked and some things that you were like, yo, I'm not about this. It's the comments. It's Adams and their mentality and their comments and saying like, okay, I'm sorry. We've all seen the whole Shahata situation happening in our households, or you've heard about it. it it's not like it's happening as much as it is like now back, back in the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. So when I have people commenting saying, oh my God, you hit that little boy with the Shahata in my video, the kid's laughing in the video. He thinks it's hilarious because it's nothing to us. You know what I mean? It's, it's our childhood. Yeah. It's part of our culture, I feel like. You can't, that, like, it's offensive to be, like, against the culture. Like, <laughs> yes. the ship ship is part, no, really, it's like the, the chanclas to the Spanish people. Like, that's part of growing up. That's, like, a, a memory, and it's the truth. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I, I got hit by the shahata. I'm not going to be, I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> it made me who I am today, and I like the person that I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 You know what I'm saying? I honestly think that my upbringing, because it was so, like, str- I want to say strict and my mom was tough. Like, thank God I'm in a straight line. Like, I, there's a lot of things that growing up I've seen a lot of friends do that I wouldn't do because I had the fear of God. <laughs> <laughs> the fear of God struck always, into me, you know always, what I'm saying? Always, <laughs> But it's just, it's just sad to me to see that people are so, they're focused on the wrong things. It's like, look at the bigger picture here. Like, what is our culture? Like, you know what I mean? Hmm. Language, food. So, so yeah. do you get a lot of hate about that? Because I know you play an Arab mom all the time. Mm-hmm. I do. It, and so I can imagine, like, the type of audience that you attract. I wonder what, what kind of hate do you get? What's, like, the number one thing? It's it's the hitting. That's, like, the number one hate that I get is that how could you hit that boy? Oh, it was just that one video? or <laughs> No, in no, in general. Like, it, it happened again, and people were stuck on that. Like, it's just – and it's a rubber shahata. It's li- like, look at – this is it right here. <laughs> Maya, you are not – Flappy, the- you know? <laughs> You know, you did not just take off. It's just, it's, it doesn't hurt. (laughs) It does not hurt. It's fine. I didn't see. Can you do it again? I'm sorry. What what did you just? This Shahada is rubber made, ladies and gentlemen. It does not hurt your children. (laughs) Maya's a psycho. She's a a certified psycho. If you're not watching the video, she's grabbing the slipper. Let me, let me narrate. She's grabbing the slipper and hitting her head with it. No, Maya, stop. It doesn't hurt. What? <laughs> and wait, so does it really like hurt your feelings? Does it affect you? It does bother me a lot. I don't know what it is. I just, they make it sound like I'm an evil person and that maybe my parents are, it's, it's just when we were kids, it was happening more. And is it right? I mean, not exactly, but like, <laughs> Is it, is it right that it's happening? But I, I just think it's it's how we were raised. Like, I don't know if you agree with me. A lot of kids. I, I definitely, I like I said, I think it's part of the culture. I think it's part of the upbringing. And I think it's, I think it's funny. Uh, it's, you look yeah. back at it now. Maybe when we were kids, okay, we'd cry maybe here and there. But like when we look back now, like we laugh about it. You know what's really interesting? I think we, I live in America, you live in Canada. So I wonder how creating content is in Canada. And there's a lot of content creators in Canada, like Safe Shawef, for example. Yeah. So I wonder, do you feel like it's a lonely world out there? It like is. Like you're by yourself? It is very lonely is? out here. And also we don't get paid. No way. We don't get paid for reels. We don't get paid for TikTok. If I'm doing, oh. if I'm doing a battle like we did a battle last time, yeah, I'll get paid here and there. But it takes a lot of work. But yeah, we don't get paid. So it's very Wait, frustrating. So are you doing content creation full time? Yeah. So then like, <laughs> how are you supporting? It's, like it's a scary thing to do Like I, that I am doing it full time. But I need to focus on it. If I'm at the school working right now as a teacher, like I'd be working eight hours in the day. 
and I have no time to focus. I'm the type of person who likes to make the video the day of. That's how I work. I don't know if you're like that. I don't know if you prepare your content before, but I like to do it the day of. You know, I'm a mix of both. <clears throat> I'm a mix of like, I shoot my content and then if I need something, I'll start working on it. Yeah. The day of, but, or sometimes I just go off the cuff and say something wild, post it and then just move on. Yeah. How do you come up with your ideas? Well, I lived through a lot of it through conversation. So the hijabi lady is not my mom. My mom's not Mithajabi. She's not um, aggressive like that. It's my dad. And, and I made my dad like a woman. <laughs> no way. My dad acts a lot like that. And my grandma's Ali and Hamam. Oh my God. I never knew that. I thought that was literally like a depiction. No, every time, mom. every time somebody sees my mom, they're like, wait, that's your mom. And I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. My mom was born in Brazil. Like she lived there till she was 17 speaks Portuguese fluently, but she's Lebanese, but yeah. Wow, I am mind blown right when now. When you see my mom, you'll be mind blown. <laughs> I am right now, I'm so shocked. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot so of people don't know this because my mom doesn't like to be in videos a lot. Oh, what? Yeah, so it's my dad. My dad, the way he talks, the way he acts, the way he gets upset, the way he laughs, the way, everything. The whole conversation like, do, is based they... on my dad. What? That's insane. And I watch certain conversations. I listen and I make a video out of that. I will literally be writing down. People will be like, what are you doing? What are you writing down? And I'm like, you just gave me an idea. And it's just like, or it'll be something so, like the other day, I was bringing stuff into my house. And it made me think about when you go to visit people and you're bringing a, and your mom's like, make sure they see what you're giving that them. That you have something. That you have something in your hand. So we're not empty handed. That is... It's just by just me grabbing stuff from like grocery shopping and bringing it into the house. That's how it oh, usually wow. like stuff like that, have, like ideas come up. That's so cool. Yeah. And like, since you're talking about your parents, are they cool with what you were doing? Were they, were they not at really first, supportive? not at first they were like, what are you doing? Like pay attention to like, they, like at the time I wasn't working at the school. I want to ask you because when I was single being a content creator, life was so different. Yeah. And I wonder like, Cause I've seen you advertise for Salems or <laughs> I've seen you advertise for different dating apps. Do you use them? Okay. <laughs> let's go. Let's rewind to before. This is my first time saying this ever. Okay. I was married. Did you know this? <laughs> I had no, I don't know. So, any of this. <laughs> so I was married. I got a divorce, went into depression. For a very long time. Divorce. Okay, so how long were you married for? Was it a quick marriage? Was no, it was about one? two years. Two years and it ended badly or it was It was very bad. Like... It ended very badly. I was being abused verbally, emotionally, physically. And the worst part of that abuse was the verbal part for me. And I just couldn't wait. So, it. so was it something that happened right away? It was gradual? Like, can, can you explain like what, like... It's not like overnight somebody, well, I don't know. No, Is it happened right away. Could be abused? Right away into our marriage the first week. It, he, yeah. No way. He, he had hurt me and he, he was upset about it, um, saying he's never done that before. But um, it then became that every time he was angry, it was a constant thing that was happening. So the first time you guys argued, he physically abused you. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've argued before. It's just, it wasn't like there was no physical abuse. It was more verbal, like um, name calling and all those things. Right. But the physical part was just like out of anger. I don't like, sometimes I felt like he wasn't aware that he was doing what he was doing. And sometimes I felt like he was. Okay. I want to ask you a question because... You get married, you see that within the first week he's getting physically abusive. I think it's 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 like such a taboo in our topic in our community to talk about. Such a taboo topic to talk about. And a lot of people don't like to express what happens. Yeah. And so this is like crazy to me that like you've never really expressed this before in public. And I know that's a, it's a really big part of your life that you know it's it's traumatic. And so I wonder like you hear a lot of times, like, when you hear stories of your abuse, like, the, the woman stays and she's like, you know, he would he would put me down so much. I really believed I wasn't worth anything. And I, I only believed that I could find love from him. And he was the only person that was going to take care of me a certain yeah. way. And when we had it, and when, when, when we were good, we were really good. And when we were bad, we were really bad. Those are the things that I used yeah. to say. So you felt you would feel the same way, like oh, like I did something wrong. It's my fault. yeah. I'd feel like it was my fault, and because he made me feel like it was my fault, but it was it was so many issues that I was trying to help him. 
and, and fix certain situations that it was just becoming aggressive in a way where it made me feel like it was my fault. And it wasn't, it just wasn't like, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to debt, like talking about debt in a marriage is, it's a big deal. Like it's, it's not easy to deal with. Like, I don't care how much a person has, but if there's debt involved and then I'm trying to work to pay off certain things in the beginning of our marriage and a house that I didn't want that maybe a smaller house just to build ourselves. Right. It takes a toll, it takes a toll on the marriage because it's like you're, you're yeah. living, you're in this marriage on your own. I say like you, before you get married, you have to have every single possible conversation you can. And the biggest number one, th I think the number one reason why couples get divorced is the financial strain. Right. And people get uncomfortable about talking about money, especially in, in the Arab world. We're like, the guys will be like, Habibti, whatever you want. Don't worry about anything. Yeah. I will get you whatever you want. I love you and all the nice words. And No, you need to sit down and understand what the financial situation is and how you can live, right. how you're going to live, like how it works. Because you're, you're right. Like you think like you don't really understand. And debt, taking on debt when you first get married, that's, that's a big thing. A lot. And he had just opened up it's a new business, survive. right? Like I understand that there was going to be debt, but that debt needs to disappear, not build up. Like, you know what I mean? And not, and rely on your significant other to help you figure out your debt stuff. No, the, these things are, need to be taken care of. You want to get married. You need to be prepared for that. You don't just get married so for the sake of getting married, married. Right. So before you got married, like, you didn't understand how deep his debt is and that you would be the uh, a main provider. No, no, no. I, I knew that he had debt, but he made me feel like his business is going to work. But when you open up a business, sometimes you can't rely on the workers to show up sometimes to work. And I, in the beginning, I didn't really understand that. But then I started to understand because other people said the same thing about their businesses. But at the same time, it's just like, if you can't handle it, figure it out. Don't let it just build, 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 build. And then I found it out about a, another visa card, and all these other things. And I'm like, Oh my God, like this is, this is a lot. Like I can't handle this, but I still try to help. I still try to help because that's a marriage, right? Like you can't just pick up and leave. It's just like, you've got to figure it out together because we came into this together. I left everything. I left everything to go live with this person to spend the rest of my life with that person, you know? Yeah. And like you made a lifelong commitment and that's not easy to break. And that's not, nobody wants to see a home break up. For exactly. Sure. Especially but in also our you community. Have to put yourself right? like first. You, this is the problem with our community. It's just like a reputation. Uh, they're going to say that you're a divorce. You're going to, you're, you're titled as divorce. Like who cares? I would rather be tied in the beginning. Yes. And at the time I, I used to be like, no, I don't want to be divorced. I don't want to be titled as divorce. Is that why you stayed so long? Yeah. Or? And I did love him to a point where I was just like, wait a second. I don't, why do I love him? <laughs> I had no reason. I literally had no reason, but it's, I, I felt attraction for him. You know what I mean? I felt certain things, but I just, there was nothing. We had nothing left to stay in that marriage mm -hmm. and it, it and then the, what was it something i'm sorry it, was it something that got so bad that at the end you were like i have to leave or the, the last issue that happened what was your breaking the last point? issue that happened was when his family got involved his dad got involved like his dad got involved with me like there was like he crossed a line and when the dad crosses a line it just tells me that there's no respect there i'm not his dad's you know and 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 Arabi, we say, you know, like, this is your daughter now. You take care of her, especially when I'm far from my parents, right? I felt very yeah. unsafe, very unsafe that I ended up running away. I ran away. Like, I didn't even get to say bye to my friends, nothing. I just left. And it was my first time. There were so many times I packed, wanted to leave, and I never did. It's very hard. It's very hard to actually pick up and leave. Yeah. But. Like, wow. this is why I'm at a point, this happened seven years ago. I'm over it now. Do I have some trauma here and there? Yeah, I'm not, I'm a human being. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, it's perfect and whatever. No, I have my times, but I'm in the best place in my life right now after everything that's happened. But for people who are in a situation like that, it's okay to leave. 
it's okay if people are going to talk. People are going to talk no matter what. Whether you're in the marriage or you're not in the marriage, people are going to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. So do I have, do I know people? I'm not married yet. Inshallah, I still have hope that maybe it'll happen. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not meant to get married. It is what it is, right? Nobody knows what's going to happen. And whether you're divorced or you're, yeah. you're still single. There's a lot of people that are still single at that at a certain age. And then they get married later on. And they never know. They never expected it. But when it comes to being divorced and, and fearing that title and fearing being alone, don't. Don't be in a marriage where you're being hurt where you're unhappy when you've tried every single thing that you can possibly try in a marriage to make it work because you actually you realize like I didn't get married to that person for no reason I got married because I I truly do love this person I truly do love their family like it's not just like okay خلاص, you know because نحن, we have to get married we have this mind that by 25 years old you know we're expired you know we need to get married we have these expectations and you know, I graduated, I got married. The next thing was to have kids. It's just, it just khalas, not meant for me to be with that person. And I needed to realize that, but how I realized it and when it was, it was too far along. Like it could have been that I had kids with him and that could have been a huge issue. So I do yeah, say no, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, God saved you from that because then that's really a lifelong commitment with that person. Like you have to have a... They're always going to be in your life somehow yeah. or some way. But it's crazy because in our community, like divorce is a big stigma. Like once you get divorced, the value of yourself as a woman is decreased. And it's not like the man. And, and like people probably say crazy things to you. And, you're, and I, I can understand or I can see why like you try. And that's literally your last resort not for i feel like americans they get divorced like no other yeah <laughs> like 51 percent of relationships end up in divorce when based off statistics but i think for us it's really really hard in general because the blame usually goes on the woman oh she couldn't keep her man and she was probably if the guy goes and says something negative they they're more likely to believe him right. and the man really doesn't have much of a blame and could move on faster right but the the, the label of being a divorcee in our community, and it's not like really spoken about. Right. It's big. Right. And you know what? Anybody who's watching this that knows me and probably doesn't even know what happened and then they're watching this right now, why would I have to hide this? Why was I always afraid to talk about this? I don't want to be afraid to talk about this. And this is, I was just telling you, Mike, that, you know, I, I might bring this up because it's like, it's important to talk about your journey through something that was tough that way if somebody else is listening you might change their life i'm not yeah. here i'm not i think a lot i'm of not sitting here saying oh yeah divorce this person because maybe they're not good to you no you have sometimes you have to go through therapy you have to try different things because it might help the marriage it might change your whole aspect of how you're living with that person but for me i tried everything i tried everything and it wasn't just like a debt issue it wasn't like he's yelling at me you know, you know, he's not, it wasn't like that. These things that you might be able to change with that person. And if it doesn't, then yes, eventually, then you're going to realize, okay, I'm not happy. Something's wrong. I think a, a large part of our community, I think because it's hard for us to express the trauma that we go through and we try to keep things to ourselves or things that happen, a big part of our community, they love people like you and I, or, you know, they love you, but it's beautiful that you could share this because people can be seen. Mm -hmm. Like there's a community that's being seen now that's being felt and heard and whoever is going through this can like relate to you. Like your life doesn't end after you no. get divorced. Like Maya's out here hustling, doing her thing and she's the happiest she's ever been in her life right mm -hmm. now. And like, yes, you, you went through a period of depression and life isn't always up, up, up and it's not always it's positive. Not perfect. But it's beautiful to see that you can take something negative that's happened to you and not let it stop you as a person, especially as an Arab woman. You can be a strong Arab woman yeah. and you can go through that divorce and you, you don't let it define you and you continue. And now you have like a brand and people that look up to you and you can share this. And, and, and you know, like I said, this community can be seen. Yeah, 100%. Like they can relate to this and it's, it's a topic that not a lot of people sp speak about because there is so much stigma around Yeah, and it. then, you know, like, a lot of parents are going to be like, no, don't talk about it, whatever. But why? Why? This is our life. This is 
a real story. This is something that actually happened to me. So why would, why would I hide it? Why am I? I didn't even know you got married. Yeah, no, I mean, nobody does really. A lot of people don't know that I was married. Some people know that I was married, but don't know exactly why I left. Even people where I was living, they don't even know why I left till this day, right? And I'm not like out here trying to expose or anything. I'm just saying, because I know that I have a friend that just left another country because her, her ex-husband was abusing her. So this is something that's still happening. You know what I mean? Like, and now she's back home and now she's titled as divorce, but I haven't seen her yet, but I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to be like, it's okay. It's, it's only going to go up from here and it's okay. It's not a bad thing. If you're single, you don't, you're, you're not a loser. If you're still single, man, you're like, yeah, inshallah, we are in our religion. It says to find your other half inshallah, and we, inshallah, we all do. And I'm happy for you that you found your person and inshallah, it works out for the long run. But for me, it's just, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't, it doesn't. Do I have trust issues? Yes. Do I feel like I'm a good person? Am, am I good for marriage? Like, well, Will I be able to take my, care of my home if I have children? Would I be able to uh, afford to help my husband if th there needs to be help? Like you know, like to work together. Yes, I can do all these things, and I'm confident in that I can cook, I can clean, I can do all those things. But there's no respect there. There's no trust. There's no none of that. This is respect is a big, big, big thing. And like I said, you really need to ask about the families. You can't just ask about a guy. You have to ask about the family. If you know somebody. So did, was it, I'm sorry. I, I, I know I'm all over like, the place, interject. guys. I keep doing that. No, <laughs> no, it's all good. But is it like when you met his family, you understood why he turned out that way or. He was, he's, he's definitely a mama's boy. Like his mom, like I, he's the only boy. Like I get it. It's, it, it is what it is. But his dad, you know, like he, he had a temper as well. So I felt like he got it from his dad as well. And, you know, the last issue that happened, like he asked me not to tell my uncle because they're good friends. Like, you know, like it tells me that you're hiding things and it's just not right. Like in your son is the way he is because it, not just because of the because of himself, like some people have parents that are a little bit all over the place that mother, you know, that mom that's like it could be your mother in law, like she could have been that person. But the son doesn't have to be like that. The daughter doesn't have to be like mm. that just because the parents are. Sometimes they just attract to that. And that's what happened. But I didn't I didn't know that until after. And that's what I mean. You don't know somebody till you marry them, right? I'm definitely learning yeah, every and, day. I'm definitely Yeah, learning and, and, and with with my ex, day. like he did do things differently that were better. There was there was some positive things that were that had changed, but with the the lack of being a husband, bringing money into the house to be able to start a family, that wasn't happening. So there was like, there was no movement. There was no going and there was no respect between the two of us. So it just, and then, like I said, the parents got involved. Their parents were always involved, but then the dad got really involved. And that's when it was like, bye, I'm leaving. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm not perfect, but I know that I tried everything. I left once. I left once because I really tried to make the marriage work. And then like, just to get yourself out of that depression, you started working on photography and building that. Yeah, I started photography and then I did DJing as well. So I used to DJ weddings, engagements and stuff like that. And then I stopped doing photography because hot ups are difficult. And then DJing, I stopped because hot ups are difficult. <laughs> so. Like difficult in one way. What uh, they're way? very picky. They, they want the price to be, to be $0. Like it does, that's not yeah. the reality. <laughs> like mm. you know you have to pay to get the best quality of anything at this point and same with DJing you know I was telling yeah. at one point I was charging $500 for a wedding like excuse me like you go to an Ejnabi person they're gonna charge you like $1,300 more yeah right so yeah. I started charging a little bit more but then I was just like I realized like I'm packing all the stuff and they don't get how much work you have to put into it so I was like forget it so yeah damn Okay, so then, so you're, are you saying that you're scarred from dating? That you that you've I am tried scarred from dating. dating. I am. I have tried online. Online dating is very hard. Now, some of my friends, it worked out for them. I'm not going to tell you that it, it didn't. They have kids now. They're happy. But for me, with my luck, men are very on that app. They would they they ask for things that are very inappropriate. I had a guy. Yeah. I had a guy on that app. He called me for the first time, and all of a sudden, I hear this. 
And I'm like, oh, what's that? What's that sound? And he's like, oh, I'm just taking a piss. Excuse you? Ew. That's just Like, it, it's a turn off, mate. It was my first time that's talking disgusting. on the phone. It was like that's 10 minutes disgusting. in. He's a truck driver. Well, okay. <laughs> hey, close the, shut the phone. Call me back. Put it on mute. Put, Put it her on mute. mute. <laughs> oh my God. No, that's rough. That's pretty rough. It is. This is like, I can't. Like these things, it's like, as soon as I hear or see that, I'm like, okay, shut the app. And then take a break for a very long time. What's like the worst date you've ever been on? I, I've never really been on a date before. I've only talked to guys long distance. Never really what done is local. What's wrong with you, Maya? I know. Okay, wait, wait. What? I actually went on a date in Lebanon. Okay. And I ate everything he ordered because he I knew he was paying, right? So I was like, I'll have an edgini and I'll have this and I'll have that. You know, I'm just ordering a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. That's Shafri Adma Hakkaid. Like I was like so dry. He wasn't talking much. What? He wasn't talking. He wasn't much. talking very much. This is what he had to say. So he said it in Arabic. So you're leaving in two weeks? I'm like, yeah. He goes, what do you think about doing a fetha? Huh? I'm like, do you know my dad's name? <laughs> like, do you know anything about me? Oh my God. Like, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, that's. That's that... kind of romantic though. <laughs> oh, I like stuff like that. Yeah. You... Like not. Right just off like, the don't bat. think about it. You want to read the fatha? And then you say, inshallah, and then you just like have the drama going, you know what I mean? And have the tingles and oh the next my. episode of the Turkish love drama happens. I think that's cute. Or delusional. It, does, it depends it's, what it's your pretty, take is. It's delusional. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, it Whatever. is. Well, it is. But I, I like, I'm not going to lie to you. I have tried after my marriage and it, it's just, it kept just getting worse. Can I, can I ask you a very honest question? Yeah. This is really for like my, this is really for my knowledge. Did you feel like a lot of, so you mostly go for out of men? Right? Yeah. So did you feel like it was a big turnoff for a lot of people that you were talking to that you got married and divorced or it was like a whatever thing? Like, what was your experience with that being a divorcee and like, trying to date again in the auto community it, it, very hard it's like it's a big thing like in the auto was guys. it blatant in your face like they would say i think hey, of men would prefer a girl that's not divorced period that's what from my experience that's what i've learned if it happens if a guy approaches me and you know he's normal like normal i mean like like i'm not being very picky but like you know what i mean i am being picky about certain things i do but if he's like a good guy like Asking about a family, like the guy in his family, is very important. It's like wait, asking for about for his guy? family. Oh, asking a guy about his family. Yeah, is very it's important. very important to know their history and their background because his. Sometimes the family is involved. Sometimes you might have that mother-in-law. Are you into a mama's boy or no? No, <laughs> absolutely not. What if his mom tries to Listen, sit in the front seat? Are you okay with that? Uh, what? His mom tries to sit in the front seat. Are you okay with that? Are you sitting in the back? Oh, that's fine. I don't mind that. Oh. <laughs> Yala Good for you. Yala hui. Be, keep being the bigger person. <laughs> no, honestly, I don't mind that. What I mind is that if I put something in a living room and they ask me, yes, I'm talking about history. <laughs> And they tell me to remove it when it's my home. Yeah, no, you're getting involved. And then he's sitting So there. what is it? <laughs> Like, if, if somebody's watching Maya right now, like, because uh, you know what? A lot of guys are also intimidated that you have, like, a profile. And especially a lot of guys, you know, like, they don't really, like, I I, I don't want to generalize, but I'm going to generalize a little bit. They don't like their women out there like that know. or, you know, out there like that or a public figure. So it's harder. So <laughs> what is, like, no, I'm serious. Like, if a guy is, like, watching you for a while and he's interested, but he's probably like, oh, damn, I can't get closer. She has, like, a profile and she's not open. Are you open to, like, so if somebody hits you in the DM, are you, like, doing research or you click on your their profile and you're, like, open to it? Or are you more paranoid? Like, it has to be an in-person thing. Uh, no, I mean, if, if somebody messaged me on DM and, and they said the right things in the message and it wasn't creepy. What's the right things? Like, you have to give guidance, I'm not, uh, Maya. I don't hi, know. What, what is the my right sugar thing? daddy? <laughs> how many messages did right. you get like that, Maya? And how many did you reply to? The Rabbik, you're scaring me. <laughs> Sounds right to me. Sounds like a right message. Uh, no, no. Uh, if, if there was a nice, it was a good message, then yeah, I would try. I would actually try. What's Has it been message? happening? No, sadly, no. But, let's, but what is a good message for Maya? Like, hey, how are you? Um, like, 
I was hoping to kind of get to know you. I see you on social media. You're funny. You're cute or whatever. I don't know. Something like that. That's so cute. I'm, I'm like blushing for you because you're like, damn. But it doesn't like- happen, man. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't want to change for anybody. I, I want to be myself. And what's myself is that, yeah, I dress very sporty. I'm very, who you see on camera is what you get. The way I dress, the way I look, the way I talk. Um, I'm no different. You know what I mean? And I just don't think that I have anything about me that I need to change. That's so negative. I mean, yes, if in a marriage you have to compromise, right. Or when you're getting to know somebody, you know, I don't like this and, and you know, you have to work together to, to make that person happy. If there's something easy to change. Yeah. Why not? But if they're changing yeah. your, your whole personality, then yeah, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. I can't yeah. do it. And the thing is, like, if a guy comes up to me and says, I don't like you doing social media, I'm sorry, I I worked my butt off to get here. I'm not going to just wipe everything out just to, you know what I mean? You will get wiped before the social media gets wiped. (laughs) Yeah. And if they found me on social media, then that's where they found me and I'm meant to do social media. (laughs) That's crazy. You know, I I actually agree because it's really hard when I was single it was really hard to find somebody there's people that enjoy your time enjoy your personality they'll have fun with you but they can't they won't take you serious because you do social media yep and like they won't look at you for marriage because you do social media but it's crazy because we do comedy and we do it in a respectable way it's not like you know that type of social media yeah but there's a lot I I told I say this story all the time I was like talking to a content creator an out of content creator And he was like, he was feeling me. And then he was like, listen, I don't want to, you know, give you the wrong impression. I don't want to think that we can get married because I don't want, I don't want my wife to be in public like that. Right. But he was doing the same exact thing as me. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I was shocked. (laughs) And I was like, you're a lost sucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like, it was a double standard. Maybe he was just jealous and he didn't want you to take his attempt, like take attention from him. Oh, I was definitely going to take that attention. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> but a lot of people a lot of people come up to me and they're like you know a lot of my my family they'll be like what if a guy comes up to you and says you know he doesn't want you doing social media I'm like why would I stop why would I yeah. stop why would I have done all this work and have gained all these followers that have become my family that I'm making people laugh around the world and it has only brought positive things into my platform like I'm helping people around the world like that's a positive huge positive thing. You know? Trust me, my mom used to have serious heart attacks. She'd be like, "May, just stop this nonsense. Nobody's going to take you serious. Like, you know, like, just figure out something else. Like, she would literally, because it's so new and also foreign to my, mm-hmm. my mom as well, or my parents, Yeah. like, it would be a heart attack thing. And she thought that I was a loose cannon in general, but then I was like a, a rock star loose cannon. Like, I was out doing shows, I was traveling. I was like, whatever, mom, marriage isn't important. I, dude, I'm like, <laughs> we have this booking, let's go. You know, like, my priorities are different yeah. and then an important thing and i'm just sharing this because it is really i think for me something that made me and max get really close to each other is that you know max never wanted to change me and he like accepted me as i was and even when we were talking and like he met my family my brother while he was sitting in the while max is sitting on the couch in our family home sweating and shaking because my dad's like looking at him like this <laughs> My, yeah. yeah. Are you a serious guy or are you <laughs> flip floppy guy? Um, my brother was like, how about, like, he had to mention that. He was like, how about social media? Like, my sister loves social media. She does it all the time. Is that something that would bother you or something that you would want her to stop after you get married? And that was a test. Like, whether you, these are not, when you go into an Arab home to ask uh, for somebody's hand, the questions have tricks to them and their tests so you have to be very careful Careful, like we might be asking a question but there's an underlying meaning to that question yeah 100 percent. i agree so max was like he was like i i actually am very attracted to the fact that she does that and she's very successful in it and as long as it's like a respectable way that she does social media i'm okay with it yeah and i love that you're still yourself around him like i haven't seen that like a change from you you're both your personality wise like at all i think if i had to change who i was you'd be miserable and vice versa i'd be miserable yeah i'd be miserable he would be miserable we'd both be miserable (laughs) and you know what the thing is the thing is may a lot of people go on social media and post that they're happy i'm not gonna lie i used to be that person i used to be that person why because i was far away 
I was living far from my family, like four hours on an airplane ride. Like, you know, it wasn't like I wanted them to feel comfortable, happy, not worried about me, but it wasn't the right thing to do. It's not right to air your stuff when you're not actually happy. I don't I, like, like, that's the feedback that I got from people. And um, I do agree when I look back, it's just like I was posting pictures because I still loved him. I still cared about him. I wanted to be happy in my marriage. It's not like I didn't want to. It's just I did it for the sake of my parents. So was it a marriage that you that like they set up for you? No. Or was it arranged? No, it wasn't arranged at all. It was but something it was somebody that I picked. And there's so many women, I swear, like I even have a friend in Dubai. She's like, yo, I, I look up to like creators like Wasen because they're so open <clears throat> about their story and sharing it. And I'm divorced myself. And sometimes like you can feel the pressure from society, like saying, oh, you're not, you're not worth anything to a man anymore. You're not worth like, uh, that's it. Just die alone now. Yeah. But like, but that's, it, that's a problem. May, I'm going to be honest with you. When I got married, I should have left the first week. I didn't. Why? because you knew it wait you knew it in your heart you're like i need to leave i need to leave but it's because us girls are a little bit we work different i'm very set on i met this person okay and i love this person i chose this person i lost my virginity to this person i am a muslim girl that getting a divorce is like a big no-no that's how i that's my mind that's how i was thinking right like like getting a divorce is a Bad, bad, bad thing. It's easy for guys to get a divorce and yalla, next week, marhaba, kifik, you know what I mean? Like for, yeah. for us girls, it's not like we're out meeting people and able to have that type of easy access to to men, I guess. I, I, I don't feel that way. I don't feel like we do, we do have the same, you know, advantage as men do. I think when a divorce happens, I think most of the blame goes on the woman. It does. And like, it's easier for a guy to like make up something or say she was crazy. She was always unsatisfied. Like she wanted money. She always wanted this. She's greedy. Yeah. Like, you know, there could be so many ways to spin it. Yeah. But like for, for women, they suffer a lot more. Yeah. The reputation and all this stuff like, oh, she can't keep a man. Look what she, her, you know what I mean? There's so many ways to spin it negatively for a woman. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it's definitely not the same for a guy when he gets a divorce. Yeah. 100%. But you don't have any kids. I don't have That's any like kids. A, alhamdulillah. Like, so obviously, alhamdulillah. I want kids, but like, I just, I, I. Not with the wrong person. Yeah. 100%. Alhamdulillah, that worked out. Yeah, because then I would have been stuck there and then I would have been far from my family. And then, you know how it is when you have kids and you're married and you're divorced, you have to be around, they have to be around their father, depending on the rules of Canada and America, yeah. whatever it is. But, alhamdulillah, like, it, I made the greatest friends there. I love them all so much. I got to see them recently Aww. and it was seven years like in the making. Like it took me a long time to mm. be able to get to go there to see them. And it was emotional. It was fun. It was nice to catch up. And yeah, I even I even saw some of his family. Like it was fine. I just sometimes you oh. just got to be strong. And, you know, I, I didn't hate yeah. everybody. Like, <laughs> yeah, you just hated him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. I'm Dude. honestly, he moves on. I'm happy for him, but I'll never speak to him ever again. For me, I feel like when somebody's over somebody, they don't care if they're happy. They don't care if they're, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like when you're healed, yeah, it becomes a I don't care. I'm good. I'm taking care of me yeah. thing. And it's not like you wish the person harm and you wish the person bad. But yeah. it's like you just don't care. I I don't like, I don't I don't care. But. I'm, I'm like, as a Muslim, as a human being, like, good for you. You moved on. I've moved on. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. Really? Yes, I'm so happy. Even my parents, like, they're so lenient. When, when, like, in the past, they were so strict, you know, and they realize that I've been through a lot. And if I can't just, they can't be strict with me. I, they have to realize that I am 33 years old. But my dad will be like, <laughs> you know, like he'll tell me my brain is. <laughs> Anyways, Maya, I want to play a fun game with you. I want to ask you rapid questions. Okay. You cannot think about these answers. You have to say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Oh, God. Are you ready? Okay, let's do this. We are starting now. First celebrity crush. Uh, oh, my God. Yalla. Oh my god. Yalla, yalla, you uh, can't think about it. What's in it? Tatum. Ooh, okay. Do you snore? <laughs> yes. 
Place you want to travel the most? I want to go to Australia. Favorite junk food? Junk food? I like chips. Do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? I used to back in the day, not as much anymore. <laughs> Favorite number? 10. Who has it easier, men or women? Uh, men. What does a person need to be happy? Food. <laughs> okay. You would say What's money. What's the best age? The best age? I'd say 20. 20. Mm. Favorite type of tea? This is very important for an Arab creator. Tea? Yeah. Like regular Arabi tea. Like the one with the horse? Lipton? Le oh. Lipton's good. Very good. I like Lipton. My mom loves Lipton. So does Egypt <laughs> in general. All Egyptians love Lipton. Favorite day of the week? Friday. How long does it take for you to get ready? 25 minutes. Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. You didn't say it so confidently. I know because I'm like, I've never had anybody ask me this question. So bad. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Nancy Ajram is... Not real. Yalla! You're taking too long. Not real. <laughs> <laughs> what? Haram. Nancy Ajram. Like, she did a lot to herself. Haram, she was beautiful. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> see what she's saying do you have your own netflix account or do you use somebody else's i use with somebody else's oh wow just like 90 percent of all their scammers in the world <laughs> sorry but homie that's my brother <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure food <laughs> i was I, I was gonna say food or hookah for you like oh yeah what I see. Is good oh i'm gonna have some on the beach hello hmm. <laughs> what is your last google search should i i have the yeah, go ahead. Look at it. I have the weirdest Google Yeah, searches. like literally. Like, oh. <laughs> 1 p.m. EDT to EST. Because I was trying to figure out the time difference for you. <laughs> I'm like, she's going to kill me if I'm late. <laughs> Yo. Because it's, I it's, saw you. it's 2 o'clock here right now. 2 p.m. Oh, yeah, it's 3 here. 3.09. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure okay. that was my last That's Google good. Search. I like that. I like that Google search. I like it. <laughs> What object do you misplace or lose the most? My phone. Your phone? Yeah. I leave it and then I don't the one, know. Like, and then I get my watch when I wear type? it and I'm like, ding. I feel like you're the type to be holding the phone and be like, I can't find my phone. <laughs> I do that I too. Find my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I so see it. Ah, I, I so do that too. It. Allah. <laughs> what is your deepest fear? My deepest fear? Yalla, a bit. Spiders. I don't like spiders. I don't like bugs. I don't like animals. <laughs> I'm with you. Like dogs, especially. Um, do you have any pets? No, you do. <laughs> I do. You have a farm, literally. <laughs> One of the questions is, would you ever appear on a reality show? Yes. You would? Why not? Okay. I mean, it's a, if it's appropriate, then my dad won't. Kill you. Like, you know? <laughs> um, or, I mean, on a live view. I'm sorry. I don't want to get banned on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Do you believe in soulmates? Yes. Okay, and the last one. Do you speak more than one language? Yes, Arabic, and English, and come kill me, hound, with Portuguese here and there, some words. Portuguese, yeah, Brazilian Portuguese. So, my, I always love to wrap up the podcast and have the guests share any piece of advice that they want to people. I know you've been very informative about your journey the whole time, but anybody that looks up to you, Maya, and sees you on social media or or things that you went through in life, what is one thing you would share to the world? And if you have any advice on being a content creator, anything that you find very important that you want to share with the world? I have something important that I want to share about culture, okay? Our culture is disappearing, sadly. We, you know, our grandparents, a lot of us lost our grandparents and our parents are really that generation where, you know, they give us a little bit of that culture vibes. But I feel like the language, food, just lifely things that we do on a general basis is like going away. And yeah, we're talking about this. <laughs> The shahata, oh, like, you know, I, oh, I think that's an trauma. importance in our culture. I think it's an importance in our culture. And I just feel like people are not speaking to their children at home in Arabi. When you can speak that language, why aren't you teaching that language? Why is it so hard? I'm getting frustrated. 
I see the passion. You know, like, I I always say this. I always, inshallah, when you have kids, my, how is it going to hurt you to speak to your children in your language? I don't know if Max speaks a different language as well. In his language, it shouldn't be hard. Just, I just find that, that everybody's just talking in English to their kids. And it's like, you know how to say Die or die, mm. you know what I mean? Or, you know, like when I was a baby, I started, I was like, when did thou, when did thou, like thou, 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 like you don't hear that anymore. You don't hear these simple mm. little words that just have meaning. For me, they have meaning. And that's why I do the videos that I do because this is all culturally related and we're relatable videos for all of us that we lived at home with our parents, our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles. So keep the culture alive. Exactly. Aww. Can you can you please before we end this like say your go to phrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <clears throat> <Dun, dun. laughs> there's that one. And there's wanna, Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. I need I need to copy these. I wanna I wanna like yeah, yeah. repeat it after you. Hi hi, how are you? <laughs> Belna. <laughs> Wait, you have to say Belna. What is Belna? Belna means like really? Yeah, like really. Belle. Belle. <laughs> yeah. Maya, I'm so happy you got on the podcast. Like, I'm so emotional. I don't even want to say bye. Thanks. I don't want to even want to say bye. Well, I have like to go say bye. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Anyways, I said in English, it was a pleasure having you. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Maya. I love you so much. Thanks for having me, Anjad. Honestly, Thank you, when Maya. you said it, uh, like when you sent me a message, I was like, Khalas. Come on. Yeah, la Come on. <laughs> I had to, and I'm so honored you were here. Thank you. Guys, this was another episode of the Maze Ball podcast. I'm going to put Maya's at below. You guys have to follow this queen and check out all her Thank content. You. And also, do not forget to subscribe to the podcast below for more episodes. Till next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Love Bye, you. Maya. Love you. Santa Max. <laughs> we'll do. Bye. Set up.